Today on Listen Up, the power of an idea, Cambodia and its genocide. Welcome to Listen Up, I'm Lorna Duick. We're in Cambodia today to bring you the story of a war crime tribunal that seeks justice for a country's past. We'll hear from its United Nations prosecutor and those who lost their entire family to this country's killing fields. In today's program, we look at the power of an idea, how three individuals who held a deep ideology could lead an entire nation into death and destruction. The idea, in its simplest form, was to create an agricultural utopia for a country that yearned for independence. In 1953, the French released Cambodia to its own monarchy, who quickly lost power of their harmonious goals. Instead, political violence, the U.S. war in Vietnam, and corruption opened the door in Cambodia to a civil war and communism. That's when, in 1975, the charismatic leader Pol Pot became the country's new hope. Together with two others from his university days in France, he began a social and political experiment to stamp out 200 years of Cambodian history. The regime emptied and vandalized the cities and left over two million dead. All citizens were forced into egalitarian work in agriculture. It meant all religion in Cambodia would be wiped out by Khmer Rouge soldiers. Every Buddhist monk, every Christian and Muslim was to be killed. Today, we'll learn from Christians in Cambodia whose beliefs now bring healing to their lives and their land. But first, Canadians working on one of the crimes of the century. Robert Petit from Montreal is the UN prosecutor trying to convict the leaders of a deadly idea. We are tasked with prosecuting the senior leaders and those most responsible. In other words, not those who got their hands dirty or even remotely close to those guys, but much higher. You have to link those crimes. You have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that these people ordered, knew, uh, had a foreseeable expectation that these crimes are committed, etc., at different modes of liability. Journalists at that time would report that what unfolded in Cambodia was ignored by the outside world the unburied dead cry for vengeance and the living dead for pity and cry both in vain. This trial hopes to address that. The government of Democratic Kampuchea, the Khmer Rouge regime, took over in April 1975 until January 1979. And various accounts uh, reflect from 1 to 1.7 million dead uh, following the regime's uh, policies. I think it's fair to say that not one Cambodian alive today is not a victim of that era, either directly or indirectly. So that's the scale you're talking about, a whole country victimized for almost four years in the names of an ideology. It's a sad reality that genocide memorials are now among the country's top ten tourist attractions. Pol Pot, who led the Khmer Rouge, died in a jungle hut in 1998, having never faced arrest. Only now are five of his co-conspirators facing justice. Duke, who ran a torture chamber in this old high school, is among them. Here in this complex, the suspects are actually kept. They're elderly. Tell me a little bit about the care of these suspects. We have a detention facility, which is located just behind the main court building. There are eight cells in there. Uh, the International Committee of the Red Cross has uh, advised us uh, to make sure that they are up to international standards. Now, clearly, uh, those being held in detention here, uh, the standards are international standards, which are much higher than Cambodian prisons. In fact, our first guest at the detention facility, Duik, uh, was already being held in a military prison. So for him to come to this detention facility is quite a step up. But it's important for us that they are comfortable, that they are uh, well cared after, that they have good uh, diet, and that their health is constantly monitored. Remember, this, this is an international court, and that means that until they are charged, they are still innocent until proven guilty. 
Accountability is the idea behind taking Cambodia's killing fields to trial. Robert has been a prosecutor for war crimes in Kosovo, Rwanda, Sierra Leone and East Timor. But Cambodian crimes are the oldest of the world's war horrors to face justice. The 30-year gap between the events and now has also brought with its, with, with its own you know, particular challenges. People have died, witnesses have died, accused have died, co-perpetrators have died, evidence has you know, uh, either been lost or is more difficult to interpret. But I still think uh, these, these processes matter to try and make humanity evolve to a point where there won't be this sort of thing. But I'm not hopeful that in my time nor probably my children's time this is going to happen. Coming up, Romanea lost his family to the killers of the Khmer Rouge and today is rebuilding his life and his country. We'll learn how, but first, when Listen Up returns, with over a million lives tragically murdered, how does belief in God respond? Those insights when we return. This segment brought to you by Samaritan's Purse. For more information, visit SamaritansPurse.ca. There's more to listen up than what you see on TV. Check out our website. You'll find blogs to comment on, questions to answer, polls to take, and clips to watch. Go to ListenUpTV.com and tell us what you think. Can man-made courts truly give justice to crimes against humanity? Go to ListenUpTV.com and tell us what you think. <laughs> 